you're tuned in to Inside Lowell. Inside Lowell podcast brought to you in part by Washington Savings Bank, serving the greater Lowell community for over 130 years. Make the switch now to Washington Savings Bank. Unicare, offering a variety of plans for people insured under the GIC. At Unicare, your health is their top priority. Reverie 73, Lowell's number one cannabis shop. Elevate your cannabis experience at Reverie 73. Hafners, heating and cooling homes and businesses for nearly a century. Become a part of the Hafners family, it kicks. Boston North Company, offering a wide variety of business solutions to help restaurant and retail clients save money. Boston North. And by Mahoney Oil Company, providing warmth and protection to families in Greater Lowell and Southern New Hampshire since 1925. That's Mahoney Oil. And now, time for another Inside Lowell podcast. Inside Lowell. If Lowell is your home, this is your place. Hello today. I'm Jim Campanini, co-host of the Gratefully Yours Wine podcast. And my co-host, Mike Pigeon, the wine butler. Hello, Hello. Mike. How are you doing today? Very well. Very well. Uh, today's show is coming to you from uh, our glorious uh, studios, InsideLowell.com, in uh, downtown Lowell. And we have Teddy Panos, uh, the uh, the owner and, and uh, our producer for today's show. Teddy, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, guys. Good morning to you. Beautiful. I'm glad you recovered from that big election, <laughs> you know, the municipal election <laughs> stuff. Yes. And Mike, once again, you beat me with the Patriots. I thought the German, I thought they'd win in Germany. You know, that big Rhineland crowd and stuff. When you have a good loser, it can be a winner. <laughs> so... I don't know. I don't know if I can, uh, that whole social security check I have, I'm just going to write it, send it right over to you, I guess. I'm you know? bleeding yeah. you to death. Peace oh, you're piece. bleeding me. It's, it's oh. terrible, but I don't know. So they get the, they can't lose this week. They won't, I, I would bet you that they won't lose this week. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll have to look forward to the, uh, the giants. That's going to yeah. be another all American yeah. ball there. That one there. So there's no show next week because mm -hmm. of, of Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving. We're going to take a week off. Then we'll come back strong the following week and stuff. Yeah. You know, you should be recovered from yeah. your big yeah. uh, turkey yeah. feast, yeah. drinking there's, all that wine. There's no council meeting, and then we can't prepare our show like we do in two days' notice. So Beautiful. All right, so let's get right to it. So we've been talking the last uh, couple of weeks about the different wines that uh, you should consider for your uh, Thanksgiving Day meal. We focused on Pinot Noir, because Pinot Noir is one of the number one varietals uh, that goes with the different, uh, you know, foods that are served uh, with uh, your turkey, your ham, it's uh, uh, Pinot Noir. We talked about the French Pinot Noirs the first week. Then we focused on the American Pinot Noirs, one from California and then one from Oregon. Well, today we're gonna talk about one of my favorite, well, it is my favorite Thanksgiving Day grape. And I call it the American grape, Zinfandel. Mm, right okay. There. And um, even though it came in from another country, and Boston has a connection because the first uh, grape vines of Zinfandel arrived in the U.S. in 1832, right down here in Boston. Okay. And... Um, I forget the, 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 the gentleman's name, but he was an entrepreneur and, and um, he brought them from uh, overseas and he, uh, he was bringing them to California. So California, um, the original uh, 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 overseas grape was, was Zinfandel and it, it just sprung up and became the, the major industry. They had the white Zinfandel, if you remember, and then the red Zinfandel. And it was only in the last 40 to 50 years that Cabernet has overtaken Zinfandel as the number one planted uh, uh, grape in, uh, in California. And I think Merlot is second now, Chardonnay third, and then Zinfandel. But Zinfandel has made a, a pretty cut. It's held steady. But Zinfandel is still considered you know, an American grape because of its stature. It was the, the first grape, uh, um, you know, in California that really put California on the map. And, and now it still does well in uh, Napa Valley, uh, um, 
Sonoma, uh, the Monterey uh, Peninsula and stuff. So, and why I like the grape is because it's, um, it's, uh, it's versatile. It's got a nice fruity flavor. And you want a fruity, you want a fruity wine with uh, your, your turkey and all the, you know, because you have a lot of spices that day. You have uh, uh, people do different things with uh, yams, uh, mashed potatoes, but it's all the the stuffings and and uh, peas and you know and, and uh, walnuts and onions and stuff. So so you want something that is going to uh, really. You know, stay with the flavors. You want to stay away from oaky wines, especially oaky white wines. That's going to be flat, like Chardonnay. Uh, oaky Chardonnays are not going to go well with uh, Thanksgiving Day meals, okay? You'll just taste a little funny in your mouth. You can still drink it, but it's not going to, it's not going to accompany and enhance the flavors of your meal. So if you're going to drink, uh, if you want Chardonnay, Go with an unoaked Chardonnay. It's not going to elevate it into a Thanksgiving meal without a good wine. Exactly, yeah. exactly. The other thing is, if you want uh, some suggestion for white wine, I'd say go with sparkling wine first, a Prosecco exactly. or a, a, a Champagne. You know, uh, uh, right now I saw that uh, uh, there's a there's a there's a couple of good sales on Prosecco and sparkling wine. Uh, one of the best is a Bria. B R I L L A. It comes in a crystal chandelier bottle. Mm -hmm. They got it on sale uh, out in Tuxbury for for twelve uh, twelve ninety nine. You know, it's a it's a good deal. It's a good uh, it's a good uh, wine. And also um, the wine connection uh, carries it. It also has a great selection of proseccos and uh, and uh, uh, chandon. You know. Uh, which is uh, uh, they have the U.S. division and uh, Gruyere uh, uh, from uh, Mexico, New Mexico, which is one of my favorites too. So that's good. But if you if you're going to go with a white wine, I do have a suggestion for you. Okay, this is Sangio B from Capana. Okay, in Tuscany, Capana is a great Brunello house. Okay, okay. So I've never tasted a white Sangiovese. Okay, Sangiovese is noted for this red wines. Yep. Okay. The wine connection sells this for, for $19.99. It's um it's unbelievable taste. Uh uh orange rind, but fruity. It's got that nice fruity uh, minerality with it, you know, and it's not oaked. Uh so it's smooth, it's still smooth and elegant, but what a a beautiful taste. I mean, you could, you could have this with chicken, uh, turkey. It would go well. Now, was that yeah. aged in oak? It, it sees very, very, very little oak. neutral. Very neutral. You know, no, no uh, new oak that that affects the tannins and gives it that uh, you know that toasty or vanilla taste. No, it's 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 fruity fresh, mm -hmm. fruity fresh. The other thing I would suggest is an Italian uh, uh, Vermentino. Okay. For white. For white. Yeah. Yes. Uh, comes from the Marema coast uh, in Tuscany. Uh, sees very, very little oak, but very, very fruity and spicy. It's got the nice, uh, nice spices. And then it, uh, then French Chenin Blanc is very, very good from the Loire Valley. Okay. So that's your whites. All right. But today we're going to talk about uh, Zinfandel. And, um, you know, there are some great Zinfandels out there. I like the Federalist. You, uh, the, the uh, 19 crimes, that's uh, uh, no, uh, more shot than It's okay. Yeah, yeah, 19 right. crimes, it's it's okay. Yeah. It's fine, but it's a little, a little cheap, mm. you know. Mm. And I don't like the, you know, uh, it's a, this is Thanksgiving. You're gonna pay a little Thanksgiving. For, a, 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 Thanksgiving. A few, like, uh, uh, you get Sagacio, which is a good, you know, it's gonna cost you about 25 bucks for mm. bottle. I mean, this you, you want to put a nice bottle on your table. Mm. The Federalist has some good, uh, a good f f uh, friends, My uh, Michael David out there in L Lodi, uh, California, the freak show, mm -hmm. Zinfandel. Not you a Chablis, though. No, 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 no. You're not gonna have a Chablis. No. no, no. You want that nice Zinfandel. Okay. But, the, the 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 other thing is you know uh uh the 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 best zinfandel winemaker i think in um in uh in america okay there's two of them uh carol shelton 
okay, from out in California. She makes the wild thing. The wild thing's Infidel. You can find New Hampshire liquor stores. Costs you about $20, $22. She, she's one of the top winemakers, and she, she loves the grape. Um, and her wines are always on, on Wine Spectators, Wine Enthusiast, top lists for, for the year. And, of course, she goes right up the line. I mean, she sells, uh, she makes Infandels that could cost $100 a bottle. But she's got a good niche in there, the $20 to $40 niche. Look for the wild thing. It's got a beautiful label, a big tree grown wild on the uh, the label. It's good. But the, the one of my personal favorites is David Finney. Okay, now David Finney, he started the Prisoner Wine Company in the late 1990s. Remember the Prisoner mm -hmm. uh, on the label and stuff? Okay, he was 25 uh, years old. He had worked in France, Italy, learning the business, uh, you know, and the wines and, and stuff. And then um, uh, he sold the Prisoner Wine Company in um, the early 2000s to the, the Constellation, Constellation Brands. For like two hundred million dollars, and just th think about it—he had one wine, the Prisoner Wine Company. That you know that that was a Zinfandel-based wine. You know it had the, the it had the picture of the the inmate hanging. It was like a French prison, the Bastille. You know the yeah. Revolution. Okay, it's, uh, it was based on that. So, what did he do? He started as he, when he signed this this with the Constellation. He was uh, prohibited. From making any Zinfandel to compete with um, with Constellation for for eight years, it was like he was in jail for eight years. He could do other wines, but he couldn't do Zinfandel. So what did he do? He started Orin Swift. You've probably seen that name, the Orin Swift Cellars. Big label. Orin is his grandfather. Swift was the maiden name for his grandmother. Nothing to do with Taylor Swift. No. Okay. Orin Swift Cellars. Okay. And he bided his time, eight years, he dealt with formulas. Um, and, and then, you know, after eight years, right, boom, he was ready to go. He loves Zinfandel. What did he start with, okay? He started, came out, you've probably seen the beautiful, funky labels, creative labels, uh, Orange Swift, Machete, okay? He's got these, you know, Machete. What are some of the others? He's got... Uh, um, I'll tell you, tell you the names. He's got some 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 fun, funny names here. What are they? Oh, um, abstract. Abstract is one, one of our favorites. I mean, it's got all the little photos of the celebrities, Elvis Presley, Marilyn Monroe on the uh, on the uh, on the label and stuff. This one that we're going to show you today. This is the reason he came back. It's called Eight Years in the Desert. Because he had to sit out for eight years. Mm -hmm. He had this wine on his mind for eight years. And it's a blend, okay, using Zinfandel. grapes from, from uh, Napa Valley and the surrounding Appalachians, okay. And he, he um, uh, you know, he had his own Orange Swift uh, 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 seller's label that he eventually sold to the Gallo Company for $160 million dollars. But they asked him to stay on as chief winemaker and do all his creative things, mm -hmm. you know. So I had to hunt this thing down. All right, it, it's uh, it's he's ramping up production. I think this is a third or fourth vintage of it. Okay, and it's a Zinfandel blend. Uh, it's got in it. Syrah. It's got z z uh, Zinfandel, Cabernet Sauvignon, Syrah, Syrah, Petite Syrah. And a local grape, Chabono, okay, which uh, which which thrives in certain areas of uh, uh, of uh, California. It was a big grape during the the early 1900s mm. when when they were making bulk wine and everything else. Okay, adds a little character uh, to the taste. So this wine costs. Uh, if you go on to uh, Orange Swift Cellars wine site, it goes for about fifty three dollars a bottle. New Hampshire has it on sale right now for forty nine ninety nine, but I found it at the Oakdale store in Tewksbury for forty four ninety nine. Okay, it's a big discount from New Hampshire. Now, when I went to the store, the manager didn't didn't even know he had it because mm -hmm. it wasn't out on the the uh, 
the um, the racks or anything. I says, oh, I said, uh, you've got this wine. It says it on your website. He says, really? Yeah. I said, what is it? And I told him. And he, and he, he says, wait a minute, it might be in the back. Well, he was gone for about 15, 20 minutes. I'm walking through the aisles. Then he comes out. He says, oh, man. He says, he says we had uh, two cases of it. But he says, no wonder I couldn't find it. There's no name on it. And we look at the label. Yeah. There isn't. It's just a, a scrub tree in the desert. But when you look in the back, it's got a small on the small, small in the back, eight years in the desert. Okay. So he said, what a funny bottle, you know, but he says, wow, the label. So it looks like a slapped on label. Yeah. So he, he opened it up. He brought it out. He said, how many bottles do you want? He said, well, I said, I just want one to, to, to try it for now, you know, and, uh, and, um, and I did try it. You know, I tried it, went back, got, a, got another one. And um, he said, how was it? I said, oh, it was delicious. I said, it was, it was delicious. It's going to be my Thanksgiving day. Uh, day wine. I said, I just love the taste. Uh, it's so dark and black in the glass, the color, but very aromatic. Mm -hmm. You're going to taste it? You ready to sure, taste some? Sure. Okay, have a little sip. Now, now, the wine goddess said to me, you're not going to open that wine on your show because you already had one. And I says, well, I says, it's a show. show. You got to do something on it. He says, I says, but this is this is a this is one of the most spectacular wines I've had uh, this year. And David Finney was uh, Wine Spectator's uh, Winemaker of the Year, I believe. It was the most spectacular wine, or was most spectacular Zinfandel. Uh, yeah. Zinfandel. Yeah. All right. And you know, another another good grape for if you're looking for an Italian wine for for, for uh, Thanksgiving is your favorite. Nebbiolo, yeah, Longhe. Not yeah. a Chianti. You said fruit. No, no, no. No, 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 no Chianti. Too, yeah. too, too, yeah. too, uh, yeah, Nebbiolo. Chianti is a good wine, and, and you could have it, but it's it's uh, it's a little uh, too dry, you mm -hmm. know? Even though uh, you want a fruity, a fruit, but Nebbiolo, not the Barolo Nebbiolo, the aged, okay? But, uh, you know, that fresh, young Nebbiolo mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. from the Longhe. Which you've, you know, which we, mm. we've taken. Huh? Very nice nose. Yeah. Oh, that is rich. Yeah, rich. Very, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, black fruit, blackberry. That's very uh, boysenberry. Rich, right? Yeah. You can, you, uh, oh, almost smells like a, a field, like after it rains, or like a, a herb field, and mm -hmm. you get oh, like the outdoorsy, rustic. I'm usually into it. Look at that color. Rings. Look at that color. That's dark. Like inky gets, black. You can't see your fingers through the glass. And um, it's it's just in, in the legs on the glass. Let me just spin this for you. Look at the, I, I hope you can see that. But, oh, man, it's like, uh, it's when you, you lose your windshield wipers, you know. <laughs> And that's like a 15% alcohol content. 15.5%. Wow, that's high. 5.5. Yeah. That's, that's up there. Now, think of the texture, and, and what do you think of the, the texture? Is it, do you feel it's smooth? Do you, do you... Mm. The taste. I like to breathe Whoa. in as I'm drinking because it's got such a beautiful aroma. Ah. I mean, it, mm. and it's still got that tan, that nice, firm, yeah. polished tannins. You can feel them gripping you, but that taste, it's just a, a fruit jammy right up front, okay? Uh, mm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and then it's just so smooth. I mean, do you think it's smooth? I mean, the, the texture? It, it's it's smooth. Um, I still have that feeling of the high alcohol content, though, too, after I s swallow. Um, yeah. Wait, it's a little warm going down your throat. Yes, yeah, yeah. it lingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's uh, well, it's fifteen. You don't want to drink so much of that before dessert. But, You'll be having a but I, I but I don't feel it as much. I feel it in my yeah. nose. Yeah, in the nose. I can, yeah. I can, That's because I can I'm smell. breathing in through there. Well, I guess, uh, it, because it does it it, it 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 permeates you know your senses and stuff. Mm. But the main thing is, I think it's harmonious. I think it's very balanced. I mean, between the acidity and the alcohol, there's a good nice balance, balance because yep. the alcohol doesn't uh, change that taste. Yep. The, the, fruit, the taste you know? is still there. Because uh, yeah. yeah. if it's too too much alcohol and it's mm. not in balance, you get that burnt taste feeling or something. 
nice aftertaste. It's it's nice. It's a good wine. Mm. It's not an inexpensive wine either, but like you said, it's Thanksgiving. dollars but I mean, yeah. could you imagine this with turkey and mm. and the gravy? I mean, that that acidity is ju- the acidity is just there. That that's going to cut through all those mm. sauces, but provide this is going to enhance the cranberry. Mm. You know, the cranberry, the sauces, uh, the the uh, uh, this will even go with ham and pineapple. You know, because it's got that nice. A fruitiness then it boy it just layers and layers of different mm, uh, mm. uh of, of different uh, uh tastes just emerge and stuff so david finney i'll just uh, give you a little more um what he says um Zinfandel, Zinfandel holds a very special place in our hearts. It is one of California's signature grapes, easily associated with the state. Um, and um, he, he, he goes on to say, you know, um, at first glance, the 2022 eight years in the desert looks to be almost black. But after closer inspection, a dark crimson starts to shine through with a tinge of purple on the rim. The nose is ripe with notes of ripe blueberry, black plum, wild raspberry, espresso bean, sweet oak, and a hint of creme de menthe and cedar. Did you taste all that? Cedar. Yeah. yeah. The entry is akin to walking through a tunnel of velvet walk <laughs> with blackberry jam. So uh, uh, it is uh, uh, age six months in fr- six months in French oak. 30% new. So it's not all new oak. So most of, you know, the, the dominant thing is is neutral or uh, used oak. So, but I tell you. Does it say what the percentage of the other grapes are? The Shiraz, no, it doesn't give you the, 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 but it just says that Zim is the, Zin is the <laughs> dominant, dominant grape, mm-hmm. you know? So, so if you want a ripe tasting wine, you know, that is very delicious. It's going to spark some conversation on your dinner table okay it is a de- uh, in, in the desert you can tell them the story about david finney he had to sit out from competing with the big boys there he is. you know mm-hmm. and if you see the prison of wine company i mean that's really expanded constellation has done a good job of that they now have uh prisoner cabernet sauvignon uh, a prisoner uh chardonnay you know so it, it's it's still a good wine but it's not the same without David mm. uh, Spinney's magic touch. And you can see uh, other wines that he has made uh, with the Oren Swift uh, Cellars, that he's still the winemaker. He's always coming out with a new and creative wine. Um, and uh, matter of fact, I was, it was interesting to see that uh, he has, uh, he's developed a, a 100% Cabernet Sauvignon from uh, from california but um he he loves the bordeaux uh, varietals and he loves to make blends he's one of the best uh uh assemblers wine assemblers uh in the nation so mike anything new to add or anything you're gonna you want to add or? no that was interesting another uh, and you could put both of them one of these and a, and a pinot noir out give people that choice yeah. But, yeah. yeah kind of put them towards this one try that and then if they don't but there's no reason they wouldn't like it yeah, I think um, I think this will. Um, uh, uh, it's a, it's a little more energetic, in my regard. But Pinot Noirs are certainly very very good. Uh, and uh, whatever you do decide to to go with for your Thanksgiving, I hope you have a great day and and sure. just enjoy yep. and uh, drink responsibly, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So until we see you again, which will be the week after Thanksgiving, Happy Thanksgiving, and may the wine be with you. You, you know what the two best words in English are? What? Free alcohol. And you know what the worst ones are? Alcohol free. <laughs> so here's to you.